blame the police. I think they should be allowed to shoot a couple of innocent people a year. And let's let off, let off some steam. I mean, none of us, none of us are really totally innocent, are we? We're all guilty of something, you know. And I, you know, I think they should be allowed to shoot a couple and keep us on our toes. And I, you know, I admire the police. They've only shot two people in two years. And I tell you, I don't blame them. The British public are really fucking annoying. <laughs> if I had a gun, hundreds of you fuckers would be dead. I tell you. And they've only shot two. I admire their restraint. They've got guns all the time. They've only shot two. That's nothing. And the British public are stupid, and I can prove this, and this must really annoy the police. This is a true statistic, right? 50% of calls made to the emergency services, 999, one in two of those calls is either a hoax call, which is terrible enough, or a non-emergency situation, something you should not... Common sense says you should never be bothering the police about. I'll give you some true examples of reasons people have rung 999. A man rang 999 because he had received an electricity bill that he had already paid. <laughs> Uh, a teenager rang 999 because he'd missed his last bus and needed a lift home. And an old woman rang 999 because she was having trouble turning on her television set. These aren't funny because of these stupid people clogging up the lines. It means intelligent people in genuine emergencies can't get through and are getting killed and injured. And I quite strongly believe there should be a separate emergency number for thick people. <laughs> All right, everyone should have to sit a test, okay? It's in common sense, it's not an intellectual thing, so you might be all right. So, so question one might be, you receive an electricity bill, you've already paid, do you A, not really bother about that, it's not an issue of any importance whatsoever. What's probably happened is the letters have crossed in the post and it'll just sort itself out automatically without you doing anything. If maybe in two weeks' time there's still an issue, write to the electricity board, perhaps sending them a copy of your bank statement to prove you've paid the bill, and that should sort it out. Uh, if it doesn't, which, to be honest, I can see no situation in which it would But let's say everyone on the electricity board has suddenly gone mentally ill. <laughs> then maybe three months down the line, you know, ring the electricity board, say you're going to change providers unless they sort this mess out and provide some proper, proper mental health care for their staff. <laughs> And maybe in two years' time, if it's still hanging over, you write to Watchdog or something, see if they can sort it out. But at no point in the next 25 years would you even consider picking up the phone and dialing 999 over such a trivial issue. That would obviously be an enormous overreaction to something of no importance whatsoever. Even an idiot wouldn't do it. An idiot might think of it and go, no, I'm not going to do that. That would be stupid. It's simple common sense. Or B... <laughs> Call 999. <laughs> so the correct answer is A there. If you fail the test, you get a different emergency number. Let's say it's 666. That's all right, they're thick, they won't get the significance of that. And that, that line is manned 24 hours a day by a pigeon. <laughs> They'll just kind of coo reassuringly down the line. They'll be happy with that. You know, they're going, I can't turn on my TV. Ooh, 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 I know, ooh, 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 you're a good listener, ooh. They'll be happy with that, they're just lonely, they just want someone to talk to. Of course, occasionally this woman, a stupid person, is in a genuine emergency and will be killed. I think that's a small price to pay for, for knowing I can always get through to the emergency services because they're not out turning on, old, turning on some old woman's television set. Stupid people have to learn, but they won't. That's the intrinsic problem, quite neatly summed up. I hate stupid people. It's not a popular view. I fucking hate them. I don't know why you can't say You can't say I fucking hate stupid people. They ruin the world for everyone else. Because of stupid people, we have Bo Selector. I mean, that, that should be enough on its own. I think quite a few of you are thinking, Oi, hey, I quite like Bo Selector. What are you saying about me? If only I had the mental capacity to link the, make the logical leap required to link those two statements. <laughs> Luckily, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I'm just hoping you'll say monkey semen again. That was the only good bit <laughs> of the show so far. For my money, you sport a bit by putting the words monkey semen into a grammatical sentence, lessening the humorous impact. For me, it would have been better if it had just been monkey semen, monkey semen, monkey semen for an hour. Interval, monkey semen, monkey semen. Mon not just that, I would also, I'm not an idiot, I would require some casual racism. So, uh, <laughs> I quite strongly feel that stupid people should be disenfranchised. Uh, it means they should lose the vote. Because uh, <laughs> people have died getting universal suffrage in this. Why should a stupid person who doesn't know anything about anything have the same say as me? I am intelligent. <laughs> I am English for a start, that is enough. I buy the Guardian newspaper. <laughs> 
<laughs> I buy the Guardian newspaper every single day. Sometimes I even read some of the shit inside it. I, I can do the medium Sudoku in that publication without hardly having to write any little numbers up in the corner, just neat. I can turn my TV on and off with minimal assistance. Why should a stupid person... Obviously, it's more difficult to say how someone is politically stupid. I think I have the acid test, though. You prove yourself politically stupid, you immediately lose your right to vote in perpetuity if you have ever, in your life, voted for the British National Party. That's it. You've shown you're stupid. You've shown you don't understand politics. You lose your right to vote forever. Fight fascism with fascism. That's my... <laughs> That's my belief. I saw a spokesman for the BNP on Sky News just before the local elections. It was this disgusting, oleaginous, thin-lipped, insipid, vapid, wan man. He was, uh, he was claiming that the BNP are no longer racist. That was his claim. Though it was interesting to me that they deliberately chosen the spokesman with the thinnest possible lips there just to send out a subliminal message to their supporters. They're going, we're not racist yet. Check out the lips, are we? Don't listen to the lips. Look at the lips. We don't know. We hate lips in the British National Party. That's mainly what we're against. When we're in charge, no, everyone will be like me. No lips, lipless. <laughs> he was claiming, I don't believe this is true, but this was his claim. He said a lot of black and Asian people were coming up to him in the street saying they were going to vote for the BNP this time round because they were fed up with the government and its policy on immigration. Now that is really stupid. If, you, if you're black or Asian and you vote for the BNP, I don't think you should only lose your right to vote. I believe you should be deported. <laughs> and uh, I've looked into this. The only political party with a manifesto anywhere approaching that end is the BNP. Uh, unfortunately, they wanted to put all black and Asian people. I find that policy abhorrent. I just want the stupid BNP voting black and Asian people to go. But sometimes with democracy, you do have to compromise to get the thing you ultimately want. Think if the BNP get in, the stupid BNP voting black and Asian people will be made to leave. So I did vote for the BNP at the last election. <laughs> Thus, losing my right to vote is a self-policing system. <laughs> See, and there's some confusion. A lot of you looking at me again like I've done something wrong. I was making a satirical point there about the nature of democracy. You can't applaud me for saying certain people don't have the right to vote. Or you're the same as me. You were stupid. You applauded in the wrong place. You're idiots. I made you look stupid. Don't go away and go, I went to say chapter us. Sen, I saw a comedian, 21st century, saying deport all black and Asian people. That wasn't it. If you think that, you've missed, missed it. Yeah, I went to see him. Did you see Richard Herring? Do you remember him? Do you remember him? He used to, he used to be on TV about nine years ago. Do you remember? <laughs> no, no, no one. No one really does remember. No, he, no, no, he wasn't the one who wrote Jerry Spring in the Opera. That was, no, that was the, uh, no, close. That's, it's nearly, that he was nearly that one, no. <laughs> No. Anyway, he's a racist. He hates black and Asian people. He wants them all deported. He's like the new Kramer. He's trying to get back on TV. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, he can. That is, uh, what, you've missed the point. If you think uh, you've missed the point, I'm saying I'm not. He wants to stab women in the stomach and fuck the wounds. Now, <laughs> that's not fair. You've taken that out of context. It sounds quite bad out of context. In context, that was quite a charming remark. <laughs> He wants to rape the stigmata of Jesus. I, I specifically said with his consent. You're not even listening now. He thinks that Steve Martin's worse than Maxine Carr. I, mean, I know some of his recent films have been a bit rubbish, but his early work, come on. She hasn't done anywhere near as funny as those. Don't go away and go, Richard Aaron, he's the new Bernard Manning. I'm nothing like... I'm nothing like Bernard Manning. I'm very different to Bernard Manning because I am being postmodern and ironic. <laughs> Unlike Bernard Manning, I understand that what I'm saying is unacceptable. <laughs> you might say, does, does that make you better than Bernard Manning? <laughs> or much, much worse? <laughs> so, um... So the environment's fucked. If you spotted that environment's completely fucked up, it's entirely our fault. There's loads of things we could do to save the environment. No one's really doing any of them, though, because we're all waiting until everyone else does it. The world's going to end in about 50 years' time. We're destroying the environment. I hate you, the British public. You're idiots. If I had a gun, I'd shoot the fucking lot of you and be applauded for my environmental work. <laughs> but so there's loads of things we can do, right? Everyone's leaving their TVs on standby, right? That creates a lot of power, unnecessarily a lot of pollution. If everyone just turned their TV sets off manually, that would actually help to save the world. But of course, that would mean getting up out of your sofa. 
walking three or four paces over the road, bending over, actually pressing a button with your, with your finger, like in Victorian times. <laughs> I understand why people aren't doing that. It's asking too much to save the world, isn't it? It almost sounds sarcastic when I say it like that, doesn't it? But that, that's not the full story, because, of course, then you do have to walk the three or four paces back across the room, sit down. Next time you want to turn on the TV, you'll pick up the remote control and go, what's, what's wrong with this? The TV's not... What's fucking... The TV's broken. Call 999. The TV's <laughs> fucked. Oh, oh, I turned it off manually. Why don't you... That was a stupid thing to do. It's another three or four paces, another bend, another press. It's 16 paces, two bends, two presses, two get-ups, two get-downs. You can, you can understand why people aren't doing that. That is asking too much to save the world. In 50 years' time, the world will be underwater because of this. Your kids, your grandkids will be living in the sea. They'll be going, why? Why, why has this happened? Why, why are we living underwater? I... I don't like it. I'm so, I'm so wet. Why? I'm finding it unpleasant. I'm, I'm non-aquatic. Why is? Why did it? Why did this happen? My, my toys are getting damp. There. They're floating away. Why? I'm crying, but you can't see because. Why? 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 Why did it happen? Well, it's um, partly because at the beginning of the 21st century, everyone left their TVs on standby. It created a lot of pollution. That was one of the major causes of all this. They can't have known what would happen <laughs> if they did that. No, uh, they did know. It's just, uh, you know, you've got to think of it from their point of view. It's 16 paces, two bends, two goes, two... Pre you can understand why they do that, you know, it's asking to... I, I can't preach to you. I'm on, uh, I'm on a 40-day tour of Europe at the moment. I, I've left my TV on standby back in London, because... <laughs> The way I look, I'm travelling 20,000 miles during this tour. At the end of all that, I don't have to walk another four paces. Bend over, get all Victorian on your ass. I don't want that, do I? <laughs> but I don't care about any of this. I'm 39 years old. I've deliberately lived the kind of profligate lifestyle that means I'll be dead in five years' time. None of this is going to affect me. I'm laughing. I've deliberately kept myself very unattractive to women, so I'll never have kids. That whole stabbing in the stomach thing, that was just to stop you wanting my gametes, sweetheart. You'd, you'd want them otherwise. You're only human. But I look... A lot of you have probably got kids already who are going to have them. You're going to have kids and grandkids who are going to be directly affected by this. You know, destroying the world for your own progeny. You're destroying, you're killing, essentially, your own kids, your own... Not just that, billions of future children because of your selfishness. Their lives are going to be wiped out. You're just killing billions of innocent little children for your horrible selfishness. What disgusting, evil, horrible people you are. You are much, much worse than Maxine Carr, who you... <laughs> judge so harshly. She just helped tidy up after two kids had died. You're killing billions of children, directly murdering them. You're much worse. You hypocritical, judgmental cunts. You're much, much worse than Maxine Carr. Still slightly better than Steve Martin, though. So there's... You know,